Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Madison Goforth. And I'm Sydney Nunley. And we are here on our first week of ministry in Montealis. I'm super excited to show you guys what this week weekend has looked like. Montealis is the second largest internally displaced camp in Colombia. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy. So Colombia has... 7.3 million internally displaced people for a lot of different reasons. Um, the drug cartels, corruption in the government, just a lot of different things. So we're at one of the camps and we're just going to live on these kids. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Oh, me da pena. I have shame. Yeah. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Hello. Bob Marley. Ciao. Hello. Hello, YouTube. ¿Cómo estás? Ciao. Sweet. Oh, yeah. I don't care. Hello, my name is Miguel. Which is like repent, repent your life, holy to repent. Right, Madison, Madison. Okay. Hello. No, 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 no. Chicos, suscríbanse a mi canal. Que lo rodríen. Yo no sé. Kiputowski. En serio. Yo no sé. This is the heartthrob of the camp right here. One more way. One more One more Mi nombre es Steiner, el mío Cristian, y mi comida favorita es el chicharrón con frijol. So we woke up this morning and a few girls were dressed in their soccer uniforms and so we were like, oh, do you have a football game? And they were like, yes, we do. You should come watch. And we were like, duh, we want to watch. So we asked our host and we're going to a football game. There she is. There she is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the team didn't have enough people show up so unfortunately Julia's team had to lose they had to forfeit but they are now playing a game with a lot of hodgepodge people and even the referees getting in on this there he goes. Let's see what he's going to do. Go, Julian! She's their new ref.
I have no idea what was just said. You look like you're at the ballpark, bro. Water break. Y'all, we just walked up on a graduation. This is so cool. And there's the dog chasing the chicken. It's a very normal thing that we experience in the race. <laughs> We're back from the football game and it was amazing. So we come back and there's like 200 kids here now. And they're all here from Manantialis and we are doing different activities with them. So Caitlin just led a Bible study. So we talked about Lazarus and I got to share um, the story of resurrection because Jesus brought Lazarus, Lazarus back to life. But with his conversation with Martha, one of Lazarus' sisters, they talked about what eternal life was, so I was able to share the plan of salvation through that. And then how at the end, when he calls Lazarus out of the tomb, he includes the people and provides community by letting them take off the linens of, from Lazarus instead of doing it himself through his works. And for me personally, the part where Jesus sweat just reminded me of how perfect God is, but how fully human Jesus was too, to be able to share in that emotion with the people. So I am helping out with the younger kids. So we just shared that story of Lazarus with them as well. We shared it by pictures. And now we're just playing some games with them, making them feel loved a little bit. A lot of these kids come from homes where their parents are in gangs or their dads have left, their moms have left. Here's a little boy right now. Que paso? <laughs> So it's really fun just to give them somewhere to come to be loved and to hear about Jesus and it's a really cool place. And there's Rachel right there with all the kids. So it's really hard to show you guys in like real time some of the stuff that we do. So I'm just going to tell you all a sweet little story because this is what our life pretty much looks like every day. Um, so we were playing out the, with those kids and there was a little girl sitting by herself with her head in her lap. She was probably like five. And so of course I'm like, I'm gonna go love the least of these. So I like run over to her. Um, Cause I try when I step into any kind of room to look for the least of the people in there. So I run over to her and I'm like trying to make her laugh and she won't even lift her head up out of her like out of her lap she won't even look at me she won't speak nothing so I just sit there for I'm not kidding you maybe 30 minutes and I'm just talking to her I'm asking her like what's your favorite color what's your favorite food a lot of times she doesn't answer and then I started to guess like is it pink no is it red no is it blue no and so that was kind of how we communicated with each other for about 30 minutes and then finally she wouldn't even let me see her face and I even asked her like what's your favorite thing about yourself she wouldn't answer and then I said it's your eyes they're beautiful and she was like no it's your nose no like she just would not do anything and then finally after about 30 minutes she finally looked up at me and smiled and I was like yes I've won I've done it and so we started chatting and um then it was time for us to leave and so all the kids were going and so we stood up and she grabbed my hand and she wouldn't leave me after that and so I just feel like it was so beautiful because I sat there with her for 30 minutes and then finally I got to ask her about her family and her relationship with the Lord and if she believed in Jesus and I asked her if she feels safe. I said, do you feel safe at home? And she said, no. And I said, do you know that you're always safe with the Lord because he's always with you? And she was like, no, he's not here. And so I got to explain to her how the Lord is omnipresent I didn't use that word she would know what that meant but I said the Lord is always with you he's in your room he's in your house he's in the street with you he's right here with you and it was so beautiful because it took a while but I got to share with her about Jesus and it was really cool and then we were best friends and she just left and I love her te quiero te quiero mucho he said I love you too all right, so me and Sydney got back from the soccer game and it was super interesting because the girls that we were hanging out with were like the rough girls in Montenegro. Like 
the girls who we went with, they were like rough girls and they weren't even friends with those girls because they were so rough. Yeah. They're like the cool girls. Yeah. And so, you know, me and Madison, we're not really afraid of much. No, we're and not. So we took the challenge and we just put ourselves out there with these like 15 year old girls who literally probably wanted to cuss us out. But this is the thing. We created a new social norm. We didn't shrink back when they were like, basically like what the heck yeah because in society when people reject us we take it really personally and we like shrivel up and cry and and tap out but in reality like they like nobody can reject me because i know how loved and accepted i am by the lord exactly and so like sydney said like we created a new social norm because they saw in us yeah. that we didn't shrink back that we pressed in yeah and we wouldn't be able to press in if it wasn't for the lord because if it was our own strength we'd feel like super dumb yeah so we're creating a new social norm nothing is awkward and also talk to the hard people yeah because in their soul they're literally wanting somebody just to know them and they want to be known so that whole entire thing is a front uh, but don't let the fear hold you back from pursuing from pursuing them so this is our, our deal we're challenging you today to talk to somebody hard even yes. if they reply back and like you're kind of stupid or anything you're not responsible for the reply it doesn't matter yes. don't be fearful for it just go for them like jesus would yep you're only responsible in being obedient amen all right don't forget go forth share the gospel